Hi everybody, welcome to Dr. Manny's YouTube Learn Shops. This is Continuous Renal Replacement Therapy Part 5 and this looks at now the Fresenius Multi-Filtrate Unit which I've worked with on numerous occasions during my career and found it to be very, very useful and user-friendly. What this Learn Shop Part 5 will review are the external features, therapy options, components and set up overview. Now the multi-filtrate unit, the front view, it has IV poles, scales, which are one and two, which weigh the fluid being put into the patient. It also has a citrate and calcium module, an extracorporeal circuit and scales three and four that measure the weight of the effluent. So the IV poles hold the calcium citrate and the priming fluid. Maximum weight should be no more than 5 kilos each. The scales, 1 and 2, they're for the multi-filtrate fluids and the weight capacity typically is not more than 24 litres. Located at the top. Then you have the monitor which demonstrates the screen, the rotary selector, the escape key, mute key, stop key, start and reset key, the on off key, the status indicator, green, operating OK, yellow, warning, red, alarm. The status lights located at the top, green, yellow, red, green means all the pumps are operating OK, normally. Yellow, a warning and if they activate only the blood pump operates. If a red light goes off, an alarm, all the pumps stop. Then you've got the IO key which is really the on off key and as a safety feature to activate it or turn it off you've got to hold it for more than three seconds. Then you've got the start or reset key and this starts the blood pump, confirms alarms and warnings, resets and centres any alarm limits and loads the pump segments. Then you've got the stop key. The stop stops the pump, puts it into standby mode for one minute. After that it will alert again. Then you've got the mute key, which silences all alarms for two minutes. You've got the escape key, which is a link. It's a link between your menu field and your menu bar. The menu bar is at the bottom of the screen and it tells you what you can do. The menu field tells you what you're actually doing. Then you've got the rotary selector and this is now a dial that allows you to select the menu fields, decreases selected values, scrolls up and down during the menu and if you want to confirm anything you press the OK key and that activates the selection. It's just a fast way to navigate through the screen. It's not touch screen. Then you've got the extracorporeal circuit, which basically means the circuit extra to the patient. You've got the arterial pressure port, the pre-filter pressure port, the venous pressure port, filtrate port. You've got the blood pump, dialysate pump, substitute pump, which again is could can be referred to as the replacement pump. The filtrate pump, the dialysate heater, substitute heater. You've got the blood leak detector and the optical detector and the air detector, which we will discuss briefly. Pressure ports or transducers. You've got blue, venous, white, pre-filter, red, arterial. Now remember, it's not arterial. It's the access. Yellow is the filtrate. So the display range that you typically have with venous, it can be anything from minus 80 to 500 millimetres of mercury. 
the pre-filter minus 60 to plus 520. The red, for want of a better term, arterial or axis, minus 280 to plus 300. You've got the pumps. There are four pumps here. One, the dialysate. Two, the blood. Three, the substitute. Four, the filtrate. The range for the dialysate, 10 to 70 mils per minute. Blood, 10 to 500 mils per minute. Substitute, 10 to 160 mils per minute. And filtrate, zero to 100 mils per minute. You've got additional pumps, adjuncts. You've got a citrate pump and you've got a calcium pump. The citrate pump essentially chelates the calcium, takes it out of the blood. The calcium pump then puts it back into the blood. So the citrate pump would put in the citrate pre-filter and the calcium would go back in post filter as it goes back into the patient. You've got fluid heaters. Two, a dialysate heater and a substitute heater. And they heat the substitute and dialysis fluid to prevent hypothermia. You've got a blood leak detector. And this specifically alerts if 0.5 of a mil of blood is detected or the hematocrit is really low, 32, and it's because of an infrared light photosensor that now detects these changes and alerts you. Blood leak detected. You've got an optical detector and this is located in the vicinity of the venous line clamp, which clamps shut if any alarm alerts for patient safety. And it detects clear priming fluid. And if it doesn't detect clear priming fluid, and it detects blood, opaque fluid, it will alert. The fluid has to be clear, the optical detector. Then you've got the air detector. So if any air is detected, ultratronic transmission is the detector, it will alert air and blood. At the bottom you've got hooks and scales three and four, and these are for accurate fluid balancing and holding the full tray bag. They hold approximately 10 litres of filtrate in the collection bag, but that's the maximum size. It's got four wheels and two brakes. On the side view, there's a filter holder, the hemo filter holder, and a syringe pump holder. The syringe pump can be used for heparin, if heparin is the choice of anticoagulation. The filter is detachable, user-friendly, versatile in its holder. The syringe driver for heparin has got a delivery rate, but you have to specifically use a 50 mil syringe, and it can deliver anything from 0.1 to 25 mils per hour. When we look at the multi-filtrate therapy options, they're not dissimilar to many of the other devices. You've got SCUF, slow continuous holder filtration, CVVH, continuous vena venous hemo filtration, CVHD, continuous vena venous hemo dialysis, CVHDF, continuous vena venous hemo diafiltration, and an alternative terminology is membrane plasma separation, which again is plasmapheresis. And you've got hemoperfusion. So when we look at SCUF, similar, different looking circuit, but really basically the same. Intended use, as we mentioned previously, diuretic resistant fluid retention, pulmonary edema. Treatment parameters, a little bit different, but basically similar. 
Here's an example of a screenshot with scuff. Then you've got CVVH, continuous venous hemofiltration. Same again, intended use is for acute kidney injury, life-threatening homeostatic disorders such as electrolyte imbalance, acid base anomalies, pulmonary edema. Treatment parameters are specific, but not dissimilar to many other devices. Here's an example of a screenshot where you've got the substitute solution, which is similar to the replacement solution, which is used in hemofiltration to increase ultrafiltration. CVVH, D, dialysis. Only thing different here is that you have dialysis solution, dialysate, which is delivered in this situation between 600 and 4.2 thousand mils per hour. Dialysate is the alternative fluid in this screenshot. Then you've got CVVHDF, continuous vena venous hemodiafiltration. And here you have the dialysate and the substitution rate, which is essentially the same, 600 to 4.2 hundred mils per hour. Then you've got MPS, membrane plasma separation, which in the PrismaFlex unit was called therapeutic plasma exchange, which essentially is plasmapheresis. And the intended use is again to remove pathogenic non-bound plasma proteins. Take the dirty plasma out, replace it with clean plasma. Here's a screenshot. Then you've got hemoperfusion, and the intended use essentially is to remove pathogenic protein bound plasma proteins. And the process is adsorption. It sticks. Inside that filter is probably a charcoal based product which causes the offending agents to stick. Absorb, removing them from the circulation. Here's an example of a screenshot. Now we're going to review briefly selected setup with screen guideline examples to show you components of the multi filtrate therapy. Typically, if you're commencing, you get a blue screen. The blue screen is your preparation. It orientates you to the fact here now that you are preparing and it gives you instructions. It tells you what to do, very user friendly, as most of the systems are. Step by step, it tells you what to do. Until you've completed everything in relation to the tubing arrangement. In the multifiltrate therapy, if you select treatment options, these have green background orientate you. However, before going into it, there will typically be system parameters which are provided by the manufacturer as standardized parameters. To make it more user friendly, this is what is recommended by the manufacturer. All parameters can be entered very easily after you review them as OK to confirm. However, if you look at specifics, here's one that says change the bag. Here's one that provides you with an information window to give you instructions. If you want to change the bag, close the clamps, remove the empty bags, place new bags on the scales, 
connect and break the cones inside the fluid chambers and then open the clamps. Here's another one in relation to the venous pressure. It's showing you trending, trending information as to how consistent the venous pressure has been and in this case here it's 100 millimeters of mercury with no change which means there doesn't seem to be any problem within the line. Balancing data. This provides you with information about how much fluid has been given and taken off. And it even gives you information about your filter service life. So that in this situation the filter should be changed within 12 hours as indicated by the bottom of the screen. You've got alarm limits. Here it's saying you can select the required change and use the selector switch in order to change the width and position of what you want to change. You may want to decrease the alarm limit range or increase it. Then you've got the multi-filtrate therapy, which is dealing with preparation, commencing and ending treatment. And these are just selected samples. So for example, you've got to turn the machine on. As I said, you've got to press it for three seconds to activate it to get it working with the on-off key located at the top under the status lights. Here, what then happens is there's a functional test or tests which means the machine, before it allows you to go on, for the next 90 seconds, it checks the scales, the pumps, the transducers, the optical sensor, air detector, blood lead detector, heaters, battery, and the alarms, and makes sure everything is working okay. If it's working okay, it'll display a number sequence, which has to be correct, meaning from zero to nine in this sequence. If any number is out of situation, it means something's wrong. Then the next screen you get is choose the therapy. So you choose the therapy that you want, SCARF, CVVH, CVHD, CVHDF, um, um, membrane plasma separation or hemoperfusion. As I said, the preparation screen is the blue screen and you follow the machine instructions until you become very, very user-friendly with the machine, which doesn't take long. It gives you information. Preparation is the blue background. In this situation, it's CVVHD, but you're preparing for that. It tells you what to do. It gives you information. It gives you notes. Then you've got the treatment screen, which is green. Again, you follow the machine instructions. Ending the treatment is a purple screen. Again, you follow the machine instructions. Here on the note, it's saying, do you want to continue the treatment? Then press start, reset key, or the disconnection key. You want to connect the arterial patient line. It's not really arterial, it's the access line really, but because it's red. Are the clamps open? So let's review. Can you name the following blank multi-filtrate components? Have a look. I can't give you too much time. Have a look. You've got the scales, one and two, for the fluids, the dialysate pump, the substitute pump, the filter, the blood pump, the filtrate pump. You've got the scales that hold the filtrate bag. Okay, review activity two. Name the four multi-filtrate CRRT options. You've got SCUF, CVVH, CVVHD, and CVVHDF. 
Review activity three. Name the following four pumps in the multi-filtrate unit. You've got one, two, three, and four. They are dialysate one, blood two, substitute three, and filtrate four. So multi-filtrate CRRT is a strategy for acute kidney injury in critically ill patients, as it also removes not only waste products, but other molecules such as cytokines, which are targeted for removal, especially in septic patients. The therapy options that we reviewed were SCUF, CVVH, CVHD, CVHDF, membrane plasma separation, and hemoperfusion. The Part 5 Learn Shop introduced you as learners to some of the selected features of the Fresenius Multifiltrate Unit. CRT Learn Shop 6 will provide you with adjunct information about sets and software features. Thanks again for following this Dr. Manny CRT Learn Shop Part 5. Please review Part 6 and please recommend it if you think it's been of any value to you and would benefit any of your colleagues. Thanks a lot. See you next time.